Welcome to the first of a series of videos developed to introduce you to the systems and service locations on the Longitude Model 700. My name is Roy Reardon, Technical Customer Support for Team Longitude, and it is my pleasure to be your host on these series of videos. These videos are for reference only and do not contain instructions for continued airworthiness. For approved procedures and recommendations, please check out the technical publications provided by Textron Aviation or other applicable vendor. In this first video, we will be doing a walk around of the aircraft, looking at each service location and talking about the system. In subsequent videos, we will go into greater detail on those systems. Before we get to the airplane though, let's first pull back and take a look at some of the Longitude's features. The Longitude will have a transcontinental range, flat cabin floor, in-flight baggage access, a very comfortable 5,950 foot cabin altitude, and be equipped with Garmin 5000 avionics. Also, the interior is extremely quiet, the quietest in business aviation. The Longitude architecture is a combination of modern design and improved designs from the latitude. The nose gear, cockpit, main entry door, pressurization system, and fuselage are all similar in design to the latitude with design and product improvements incorporated into the build. The new wing design includes bleed air for ice protection, while the horizontal uses electromechanical de-ice actuators to remove ice buildup. The new main gear is a trailing link design. The engines are Honeywell HTF 7700Ls, the TRs are from Aircell, and GKN supplies the nacelle. The APU, also from Honeywell, is a variant of the 36150. Finally, the rudder and spoilers are electronically controlled. All right, now we're out of, finally out at the airplane. We can get our hands on it, and we're going to start in the nose section on the port side. Uh, like we said in the presentation section, if you're familiar with the latitude nose section, then you're going to be familiar with the longitude nose section. Now in here, we're going to see the oxygen system and the servicing point for the oxygen. All right, the oxygen system consists of two bottles, a 115 cubic foot bottle on the port side and a 77 cubic foot bottle on the starboard side. The servicing panel can be found right here, can be serviced and checked quantities right there. Uh, the quantities can also be checked on the Garmin system in the cockpit. Finally, the temperature compensation placard is right here. One more thing I'd like to point out is that these bottles, due to the design of the nose bay, can be removed and replaced without breaking into any other system. That's pretty nice. All right, now we've taken a few steps back and we're finding ourselves at the main entry door. Again, if you're familiar with the latitude main entry door, you're going to be familiar with the longitude main entry door. Simply pull the handle and allow the door to free fall into place. There we go. Now we're going to access the exterior main entry door control panel here, and we're going to toggle this switch to close the door. We're going to secure the door with the handle again. Now don't forget to close up your exterior main entry door control panel. Now you're good to go. Okay, we're behind the wing, still on the port side, and we're looking at the exterior baggage door. To open it up, simply raise the handle out, turn it clockwise, and the door goes right up into place. Now you have access to all your baggage. To close it, just reverse the process. and then secure the handle back in its seat. All right, just below the exterior baggage door, we're gonna find the left-hand ship battery bay. These four latches gains us access to that area. One thing I wanted to point out is the elevation of this bay is really nice for removing and installing these batteries. Finally, you can attach a squat box here if you need to simulate in air during maintenance. All right, one panel behind the left-hand main battery is the hydraulic ground service panel. So open this up, and in here we're going to see the A and B system, pressure and return, bleed cables, and accumulator pressure gauges. Now there's quite a bit to the hydraulic system, so we're going to get into that in greater detail in another video. But some of the things that are interesting is that we're using 87257 fluid, and the system has a PTCU, Power Transfer and Conversion Unit. 
that unit does quite a bit, so look forward to that other video so we can talk about some of the things that are in the hydraulic system. All right, the next service port we're going to get to is the freshwater service port. Two latches gains us access to the panel. Inside we're going to have a fill to fill it, drain to drain, and then normal operation is flight position. The standard plug is a standard freshwater plug, and then we got the quantity gauge there on the right. The system can also be filled on the interior, but we'll show you that when we get to the interior part of this video. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of points of interest on the engine. Now remember, they're Honeywell HTF 7700L. First thing I want to point out is the oil sight glass. Now remember to check the oil between 5 and 30 minutes after shutdown. Also, the filler point can be seen here. And down here we can find some drains that are also chip detectors. A couple more things I wanted to point out is these are air start engines. The air starter can be found right here. Hydraulic pump can be seen right here. The TR maintenance switch is right up here. Oil filter can be seen right here. And finally, the fuel filter can be found right there. Just after the tail section, you can find this access panel. Inside of here, you can find the rudder backup system and two TR isolation valves. These valves will remove hydraulic pressure from the TR bucket simply by removing that pin, toggling this valve over, and resecuring the pin. All right, we're on the starboard side now, and the first service panel we come to is the external ground power panel. The external ground power circuit breaker can be found right here. And your ground power unit needs to supply 25.5 volts DC minimum to 31.5 volts DC maximum. All right, we're at the APU now. Now remember, it's a variant of the Honeywell 36150, similar to what's on the Citation 10. I wanted to point out the oil sight glass right here. And down below here, we can find the oil chip detector. All right, next up, we have the waste tank door. Inside, we have a standard waste removal valve and a rinse valve for the storage tank. Now, the tank can be rinsed out with either fresh water or blue water. All right, we're in front of the wing now, still on the starboard side. First panel I want to look at is the refuel panel. Now this is a standard single point refuel valve right here. And down here you can find your ground port. All right, above our single point refuel valve we can find the refuel defuel panel. Our power switch is here. This toggle will allow us to do a pre-check by selecting down. Up once on this one gives us a lamp check. We can select auto and manual mode with this one. We can increase and decrease our pre-selection with this toggle here. And when we're in manual mode, we can open and close the valves with these toggles here. One thing of final note, selecting up twice will give us engine and APU oil checks. Also, instructions for fueling and defueling can be found on this placard on the door. All right, we're back at the nose section again, this time on the starboard side. One final thing I wanted to point out was the pressurization and reference ports found back here. We're at the aft cabin vanity, and what I wanted to show you here was how to service the fresh water system from the interior. Once the vanity pane is open, simply remove this box, and that will gain you access to the interior fresh water service valve. One final thing I wanted to point out is in the aft baggage compartment on the starboard side. Behind this door we have access to the FADEC and ARIES boxes for maintenance and troubleshooting. That was our video of the Longitude Model 700 showing service panels and access locations. Keep an eye out for future videos where we will go into greater detail on the systems that we talked about today. If you'd like to see some additional information, you can check out our website at txtavsupport.com or contact us at 316-517-9335. You can also email us at team700 
at txtav.com. I hope you found the information in this video useful, and we'll see you next time.